Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. Uh, we're episode number 923 today, 923, countdown towards a thousand going. Um, topic today is going to be about feelings. Oh yes, oh oh feelings. <laughs> and basically I want to talk about how we do and don't effectively express our emotions and what we can do to improve that if you don't already have a better way. Let's see where we go with this one. And and I, I will probably... I probably will explain, suggest, recommend some difference differences for men and for women because we are functionally different when it comes to emotions, which I'll get into and explain more. Before I jump into all of that and give you all the insights and knowledge you need to know about this stuff, we'll see about that. Um, let me choose myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational speaker, relationship, excuse me, inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, relationship attraction expert and author of the best-selling book 50 ways to love your lover a book for singles and couples men and women I help women create balance in love life and business because i'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine and this also informs my work with women and what started these talk these talks just over three years ago called messages from the masculine inspiring a feminine heart so today after three years we're episode number 923 yes i am keeping track <laughs> i'm just perusing through my youtube uh, archives and there's so much stuff out there so I'll tell you about the replays at the back end so you can get them then, but I want to talk today about emotional expression. Or maybe you should talk about it as venting, or outbursts, or blowing up, or stifling, stuffing, hiding, running away, etc, etc, because all of those are forms of emotional expression. Hi Steve, nice to see you sir. And what comes, what brought this to mind is, I was actually listening to some, reading some articles and listening to some audios, and in the conflation, confl yeah, conflation of all those, this became sort of a topic I hadn't spoken about much. And one thing I'll speak to, thank you, Steve, I love that, appreciate that. And um, you be blessed too, sir. Um, thank you for the love and support and for spreading the lovely word yourself. You are a master coach, and I recommend highly. Um, so, emotions, we all have them. Now, it may not look that way, and it may not sound that way, but we all have emotions. And for boys and for girls, when we're young, it's usually a different path we follow to express those emotions. Um, I firmly remember as a young kid um, being the older brother and having um, having my father um, hang say it this way our family was very reserved English stoic Jewish hidden so our emotional expression was limited anyway just because the environment I was in <laughs> and it was challenging for me you know I spent most of my t most of my um, hi Keisha hi Michelle I see my broadcast I spent most of my teen years as I mentioned on other broadcasts being bullied at high school and I didn't have a way to express the emotions in a way that felt safe because I felt like it was unsafe to do any of that. So I didn't really know until late 20s at least about expressing in any form of any way. And I've been spending a lot of time over the last several years, <laughs> not saying how many years, but several years exploring this and talking about this more because I've learned so much over the years and I'm still learning stuff today because what I learned now shifts the whole paradigm for me. So I want to share some of that with you. So again, as I mentioned as kids, boys and girls are raised differently. Boys are usually, and I know I was, raised to sort of suck it up and be a man and grow up and, and hold it together and, and be tough because we're not girls, we're boys. That was the rules. Whereas girls, as far as I know, because I, I wasn't raised with sisters, weren't given the same instructions. Although they may, depending on their family upbringing, particularly by fathers who didn't maybe understand emotions, do their best to shut their girls down. And I know a lot of women who've been through that where they were shut down emotionally as kids because their parents didn't necessarily allow that or appreciate it or especially if the kids were crying a lot. So your parental in input, <coughs> excuse me, your parental input and your parental, um, I was going to say oversight, that's not really the word I'm going to use, but it kind of fits. The, the, the view your parents had may have influenced your choice about how you express your emotions as a kid. Fast forward to your adult life and that may or may not have changed. The thing that I want to speak to is a couple, there's a couple of aspects I want to speak to. One is um, being authentic with our emotions. And the second part is about being, um, what's the one I'm looking for? Mastery? As it is mastery. Emotional mastery, because for a lot of people, those are things they're not even aware of. So first of all, the fact we're being authentic is the fact that emotions are in all of us, as I mentioned. Men and women have emotional expression. Yes, it's different because um, male, masculine men have different energetics and, and alignments than female, feminine women. I'll make sure I have the right matching names. 
So there's different functions there. And for men, for a lot of us men, handling being around a woman who's emotionally expressed, emotionally upset, emotionally venting, is not easy. In fact, a lot of men are very untrained in this area. One of the problems that women face is there's no, there aren't that many, many men out there who understand how to be with you. So here's a piece I learned from Madison Armstrong um, years ago now, probably seven, eight years ago. But she talks about this in her work about the basket. And I explained, I'm going to take her teaching, put it here so you understand it. For this piece, because when it comes to emotional expression beyond just a hi, how are you doing or a smile, the deeper emotional expression, for some people it's almost impossible to deal with, excuse me, wrong word. It's unlikely they can handle it because it's not impossible, just they're not trained or not aware of or not even present to. So emotional expression, when it's authentic, is real, like duh, authentic, real, makes sense. But even that is often suppressed by the people because they can't handle it. Because there are a lot of people in the world, I know, and a lot of men, and some women, a lot of men especially, who are afraid of emotions in themselves and in others. I was one, I know what it feels like. So let me just speak to the piece from Alison Armstrong, which talks about the basket. And let me give you this, let me give you this framing first, because it's a big piece. For, let, for you, if you're in a relationship, men, this is how you want to act. Women, this is sort of how you want to have a man treat you if you're getting emotionally upset and you want to vent or release. And let me explain it this way. When a woman is upset, for those listening, it's not to attack somebody. For most women, when they're upset, it's to release accumulated pressure, so to speak. This is generally speaking. There are exceptions to the rule, just to be clear, but this is the generalization. And so when a woman is upset emotionally, oftentimes it can come out extremely, um, <laughs> the word came out, torrential, like rain. It comes out very fast. And for most men, because our fit, our ruling, and this is the thing of the difference between men and women, one of the challenges that Alison talks about, is that we as men are designed to fix things. We're designed to solve problems because our job is to get to the end of the goal, complete things and be done. So when a woman's upset and is venting, there's nothing we can do to control it. And it's extremely frustrating for a man who doesn't know better. Because our, our job will be to try to fix it. Ladies, you know this, I'm sure. If you've been in a relationship with a man who doesn't understand how to be with you emotionally, when you're upset and when you're venting, how frustrating it is for you and how painful it is for you when he tries to stop you crying. Like he shuts you down, tries to fix it, tries to give you an answer so, you can, so he can be happy. Meanwhile, you're being suppressed and being repressed energetically, which isn't healthy. So here's the key, or one of the keys that Alison talks, which, which I love, and I've heard it from feedback from friends, that's really true. Ladies, when you're upset, you want a man to know, and sometimes you might, want to, might want to teach him if he doesn't know this already, that when you're being upset, he doesn't have to fix you. Now, guys, if you're listening to this, if you get this, you'll be feeling very relieved. When a woman's upset, it's not your job to fix her. Hopefully you're breathing the sigh of relief like, Phew, that's a relief. However, what you are required to do, gentlemen, is to be there for her. And the thing about being there for her is not about doing something. This is the, the weirdest part, which I had to learn. And it's still something I'm, I'm, I, I'm tempted to cheat, to cheat on this way of being. I sometimes I want to go fix things because the temptation is so strong in all of us men with, male, with uh, masculine DNA or masculine um, programming. When we are functionally with you when you're emotionally upset, ladies, the way we need to be as men is to hold space. Imagine as if we're holding a basket. The way, this is the way, again, this is Alison, Alison Armstrong's teaching point. I love the way she talks about it because when she explained how this works, it was so viscerally painful for me, upsetting for me. I knew how I could not do anything different. So here's the, how she talks about it. Ladies, when a woman's upset and she's expressing and venting and getting things out, it's like she's throwing up emotionally. Like ch chucking up, throwing out, getting out of a system. All of it, horrible, gross stuff coming out emotionally. When a man tries to fix it or tries to shut you down, it's like he's trying to push it back into you. And that visual in my head just goes, oh God, no, thank you. So it really hit me hard about that doesn't work. So when a woman is upset, what a man's role is, is imagine he's holding a basket for her to throw up into energetically. Now it's not physically, although I've been there once, with a woman, that's a different conversation. I talked about that uh, a few weeks ago. That's not relevant here. So emo emotionally, energetically, a woman is, th is, is venting, sharing, ups releasing her upset, pain, suffering. And some of it may be about the man. It may not be, but it may be. So gentlemen, this is the thing. First of all, don't try to fix. Secondly, don't take it personally because it's not actually about you. You were just part of the um, filing cabinet full of reasons why she wants to be upset but it's not personal, not yet, not until she's over it, so hold on. 
So again, holding this imaginary basket, holding the imaginary space to let her vent and release and keep getting out of her system. The things that you don't do, as I said, is try to fix it or try to shut her down or try to solve her problems. Unless she asks you to. And ladies, if you really want to get a solution, ask him for solutions. Do not assume he will give them to you because if you train him the right way, he won't be giving any to you. <laughs> Just to be clear. So when he is in the space of holding, he's making it safe for you to release. It's making you safe for you to be upset. It's making you safe to release everything. And a man, gentleman, if you hold the space solidly and you really are grounded and you're running, not running away, she will trust you so much more because you're going to be what you're meant to be in a masculine hearted man is rock solid. And that space you hold is something she can trust and depend upon, which generally she will, 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 will not so much minimize, but it will, it will shorten the life period of that upset because she can start to find that you have become the man she wants to trust and she will rely upon that. And her upset will dissipate more easily. <clears throat> the challenge is going to be if you aren't stable, if your upset might not, not have anywhere to go, so it's going to go, it's almost like having um, like a fire hose, water spraying around with any control, it's going to go everywhere and everyone's going to get covered, so to speak. So the power of the masculine holding the space is almost like holding the hose in a way that is safe as well, so it doesn't keep spraying everywhere, like flipping back and forward, and allows the woman to be upset and vent out, and vent it, complete her venting. So this is the thing again, reminders, gentlemen, nothing to fix, nothing to see here, nothing to fix here. Secondly, it's not about you. Ladies, when you fin finish venting and you please let him know so he can basically let go of that position he's been in because he may want to relax a bit too. Second part is, if you want him to give you feedback, guidance, counseling, or an answer to a problem that maybe he started for you that you're upset about, be willing to ask him clearly. Sounds simple, but it's that way of doing it because again, we are, as I've talked about many times before, we as masculine men are single focused. So if you're holding the space for a woman, problem solving then gets put to the back burner. It's not available to us. If you want help to fix problem, tell us that so we can address that and respond to that. This process of being together emotionally in relationship is a powerful place to shift energetics. So that's, that's one piece. So that's a piece about relationships and about masculine and feminine expression. So listen to another piece. I'm going to share another thing from I was at an uh, Armstrong event two years ago, three years ago. It was th maybe three years ago now, where we had a conversation about anger. And it was a conversation where there were men in the room wounded. It was a co-ed event. Um, and Alison's work is amazing. I love her stuff, as well as the other teachers I started with. And she talks about, she actually was talking how she thought what men's anger was about. And some of the men in the room were like, uh, no, that's something different. So when the men shared what was a unanimous feedback from the men was, is that when we are angry as men, especially when we're heart-centered we're heart and we're caring men, anger is immediately followed by shame. When a man gets angry just to hurt something and hurt somebody and hurt somebody else, if he's doing it out of anger, if he's not, he doesn't feel shame or some sense of um, depletion afterwards, he may have some issues around anger because the truth is when we feel, when we express anger, it's because it's a last resort. For a man to get angry to be out of control is nothing short of like the last resort we have. So when we do that, we know we've crossed the line we don't really want to cross. We tend, tend to feel shame. That's a way that we're wired as men, generally speaking. Some men don't fit that paradigm. That's a different topic, but that's a different challenge because a lot of men who don't have the, haven't done the work to become emotionally mature. So it's talking about emotional mastery as well. So authentic expression and emotional mastery. So emotional mastery to me, and I'm still working on it, I'm not perfect at it, but I'm getting better all the time, is learning how to be authentic in my expression to make it safe to be around other people and make it safe for other people to be around me and thirdly, to be aware of what's, what I'm feeling. I mean, it sounds so simple, but it's not always easy. We were trained as men, I know I was, to be so distant from, disconnected from our emotions, we just kept suppressing everything, pulling it down, holding it down, ignoring it, and trying to get through life and making it okay. But meanwhile, so many men are going through challenges with suicide, with heart attacks, with depression, with all that sort of things, it's because I believe a large part of it is because we don't have emotional expression as a sacred and safe thing to do for men. So I know, excuse me, I believe, let me be real about this, I believe that's one of the rooms we have to grow for men as well, it's for men to be told and shown it's safe to be expressing themselves emotionally. Because I know when I had that freedom to do so, my emotional state shifted. And I also come back to center again. Yes, I've done a lot. I've been on a spiritual path for many years. So being centered is one of my, I want to say mainstays, but it's where I tend to spend my time, which is emotional expression is a place that goes outside and comes back again. 
but there are many people who live outside that framework because they're in depression or they're in or they've had heart attacks or they're feeling so out of whack they don't know what to do with it so find a way to come back to center it isn't about okay just meditate and oh you'll be fine it's about can you be safe to express emotionally so I'm suggesting this is something you may want to do with people you know who maybe you feel concerned about because maybe they are becoming um, depressed or you think they're on the verge of choosing off the planet or they're going through other stressful things that are hurting them let them know or let them find help them find a place where they can express emotionally safely for men because we don't have that built into our DNA we don't have it built into our, our um, understanding we don't, have it, don't, we don't have it built into our culture even for one of the things that's good for men that's one reason men it's important for us to have physical activity so sports or hiking or doing other things is good for us because it's part of our physical exertion helps us get the emotions moving it's for men that sit at desk all the time that don't express that are the challenge they have the challenge to work through so let, so let me split back to the ladies for a second I'm giving you like tit bits of different things along the way so ladies um, as I said as I said before the feminine is much more emotionally based than the masculine there's a distinct um, I'll say this there's a distinct difference obviously between men and women so when ladies you're expressing your emotions as I said before definitely educate the men around you so they're not taking things personally and also they know what to do to be able to support you and serve that space but secondly if you really want to get support find your girlfriends one of the biggest challenges is because we are different and we don't think so like referring back to Alison Armstrong again she has this thing saying where women have a problem with men thinking they're hairy, girl, hairy women and we're then, then not meaning that we have to be understanding of each other's differences and respect that so sometimes ladies when you want to express emotionally it's safer to find a woman to be around to vent with than is a man because you're on the same page so know that as part of the makeup stuff so when you've got a man in your life you can trust with that great but you may not always want to use him for that if it's something that's going to happen a lot you may want to find a sister you can go to instead so it's just some ideas um, there was another piece I want to drop in here I think let me think let me think Oh yeah. The emotions are not weapons. <laughs> I should put that, in that would be a good title. I should make, my major title to that. Emotions are not good weapons because the thing is, when you use emotions as weapons, first of all, people won't trust you. Secondly, people will be scared of you and want you around you. And thirdly, um, when you are really feeling authentically emotional, they won't listen to you, and they won't feel for you, and they won't hold for you. So just to be clear, and and just to be clear also. Emotions used as weapons is not always a negative thing. Some people sometimes use joy as a weapon. I've seen it. It's weird, but I've seen it. But especially negative emotions. So using emotions as a weapon to get what you want, to hurt somebody, because that's the thing. Is if you want to hurt your partner because something they did by emotionally um, assaulting them, please don't. That's not emotional maturity. That's immaturity, drastically so. That's childishness. If you're upset with them, then dealing with upset and then dealing with them are two different things and in healthy relationships and healthy emotional maturity allows you to, to graduate to the level where you can handle your emotions in a way that works and then you get on with life in a way that works too that's a healthy way of doing it so running away from your emotions or just spouting them out without any control are not recommended they're not mature they're very challenging in fact and to handle your emotions that's not worth to manage your emotions well, manage the right I mean, handle imagine manage to have your emotions flow in the right uh, I've got to find a way to say this, hang on a second <laughs> it's like I say, no, nah, it's not working there so to have your emotions move gracefully and authentically with you that sounds better requires a certain level of understanding of who you are as I said, I've been on this path for a long time um, over 30 years of doing this work in different studies and layers and teachings so I've learned a lot about how I, how, who I am and what I am about emotionally and where I also had problems where I was stuck with. So definitely I know there's areas of emotional expression where I've been stuck and I'm still working through. But my invitation to you is to look at your own um, emotional interactions with other people and see how you are with them. Are they from a place of wholeness or are you using them as a weapon? And that's a good way of telling right there. Um, we, it's like the thing about it is we all have emotional expression or the, unless they had a lobotomy or something like that leave that one alone um, but if you don't deal with these things if you don't express your emotions authentically they get suppressed and expressed emotions by the way I say ignoring them 
not good either because if you suppress your emotions it creates toxicity in your system literally physical toxicity in your system because the emotional um, health contributes to physical health and the emotional illness contributes to physical illness they're all tied together so don't take this lightly take it to heart and use it so my invitation to you is to as your homework so to speak is to be aware of where you've been in the emotional expression the last week or so and what's coming ahead especially towards the holidays see where you may be out of alignment where you want to change if you're doing things great great wonderful no problem but if you feel like you could do some improvement take some of my what i said to heart pray with these practice with these if you want to get help reach out to me i'll put a link in the comments so you can get a chat with me so you can get some clarity and understanding if you have some challenges with this but i really see i really want to recommend that you find out how your emotional expression comes across and it may be worth you do worth your while to ask other people who you've been emotionally expressing with how they receive you because you might find getting you might find you're doing great or you might find maybe they're not even seeing you the way you think you're being seen it's good to know these things in fact it's good about all sorts of life to get verification from other people feedback and learning from other people how they think of you what what you feel so you can really be um aligned with who you are that's a lesson from life by the way um as a remind as a couple of things i'm gonna throw in the comments i will put a link in the comments so you can reach out to me for a chat and also put a comment also put a link in the comments for my self-love meditation i'm putting it in there because for many people Part of the challenge with being emotionally free is because we don't know how to be with ourselves in a way it's authentic. And my self-love meditation, besides other benefits, including um, focusing on gratitude and creating good intentions, and also being present to yourself, is also it gives you a sense to come home to yourself, which is great for emotional expression. So if you've got self-love meditation, be in the comments. I put it there for a reason. I advise you getting a copy yourself and diving in audio and written um, uh, guide. So that's one of the comments. As a reminder to you, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. Um, you join me every day of the week. Sometimes it moves time-wise, but it's always every day. That's why today we're at number 923. Yes, I've done a lot of these now. In which case, you might want to check out the replays. I keep replays on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author, although I just looked today. There's only a few hundred there because Facebook doesn't seem to show them all at the same time, which is kind of annoying. But I'm glad I've, I learned my lesson way early on when I was using, still using another app before I use Facebook Live to back them up on my computer. So what I've done is I've also created a, a YouTube library, a playlist rather, called Messages for the Masculine on my channel. And my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. We can find, please subscribe by the way. We can find the playlist, Messages for the Masculine. We can watch all my broadcasts from newest to oldest. They're all out there. I was actually working on it today because I'm posting a bunch from another site. So you can check those out and have a look and scan through by keyword, searching for what you need and then watch them and get value from them right there. This is my intention to serve, to support, and inspire. So I do this every day. So I'll be back in tomorrow with episode uh, 924. And how do you express your emotions? Are you good? Are you bad? Are you, are you having fun? Are you having challenges? Are you suppressing them? Are you expressing them? Are you running away from them? Are you overloading? Be honest. Let me know in the comments how you feel about that and how this is working for you. And if this has been of use to you, I appreciate that too. And uh, with that, I will see you again tomorrow. I appreciate you being with me and I thank you for watching as always. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Hi, Cindy. Nice to see you.